What's up my friends? Welcome to Workout Wednesdays. My name is Tristan and we are about to dive into some openers for your hips. And as the sage Shakira has made well known to all of us, our hips don't lie. So I want to prepare you. Your hips are maybe about to share some kind of painful truths with you, but with some breath work and the right mentality, it will serve you very well. So clear some space for your mat and let's get into it. Let's get started by simply sitting on your heels. If it feels okay for you to sit directly on them, just come into that position. However, for many people, it does not. If you happen to have a couple yoga blocks, this will serve you really well. And if you don't, go on Amazon, they're not that expensive. They'll serve you very, very well for your home yoga practice. So, two options. You could place a yoga block if you have it, like between the heels, and come to sit on the block on any level. If you don't have a block, no worries. Just find like a pillow or some substitute prop. Maybe like your economics textbook from college that you have not opened uh, since the day you graduated. So finding whatever variation works for you. And we're going to set a brief intention at the beginning of our class here. So with your hands heavy in your lap and your spine nice and upright, imagine like the crown of your head magnetically pulling toward the ceiling. Take a few deep, deliberate breaths, breathing in through the nose, and open the mouth out through an open mouth exhale. And take several breaths just like that. Inhale. Once again, in through the nose. Once again, open mouth. And the intention we're going to set for today is simply winding down. So a few more breaths to that intention. Inhale. Whatever you've experienced throughout your day, good or bad, just let it go. Whatever you have to experience later, whether you're looking forward to it or not, just let it go. And prepare to move into some openers for your hips. So the first shape is what's known in the yoga practice as Virasana. And where we're at right now, sitting on your heels or a block or a prop between the heels, is a preparation for Virasana. So, if this feels good, you can stay here. If you feel like you can deepen a little bit, you can drop any support between the heels down to a lower level. So if you're using a couple pillows, maybe slide one of the pillows out or switch to a thinner pillow. If you have a yoga prop, switch from one of the higher settings to a lower setting. Or so too, maybe if you feel comfortable enough, you can sit down between the heels. Now be careful, for some of us, this can be too much on the knees. So, tune into what your body is telling you. But you should begin to feel some gentle opening in the front of your thighs. So just breathe into that. We're going to hold each of these shapes for about a minute or two. And that will really fly by if you just bring your mind to focus intently on the breathing of the breath and the sensations of the body. So don't worry about how much longer you have in each pose. I've got you 100%. All you need to do is bring the mind to the breath and the feelings in your physical body. Of course, if at any moment this feels a little bit too intense, you can back out a little bit, bringing the hips up. Or maybe your body's opening and you want to go a little bit deeper. Use your intuition. If you want to go deeper, you can maybe bring your hands behind you. Maybe walk your hands to your feet so that your elbows can plant down on the earth. And of course, notice I said maybe. 
definitely not required, but if it feels like it serves your body, do so. If you come down into some variation of this and it feels like you're overextending into the low back, actively lift the pelvis and draw the tailbone forward a little bit. You should continue to feel this deepening in the front of the thighs. For the last five breaths or so, you can stay where you're at, or if you want to explore going quite deep, you may lay all the way down. But of course, if you're a beginner, this might be too deep for you. Or it might not. Just tune into where your body is at. Three more deep breaths wherever you're at. You could be sitting upright still or laying all the way down. Know that there is no more advanced pose based on how deep or how shallow you are in it. The most advanced variation is the one that suits you the best. On your next inhale, gently roll your way back up. Take your time. Don't rush this. Slowly bring yourself forward onto your hands. Scoot the legs back. Coming into a child's pose, the big toes will come together. Drop your hips back toward your heels. And drop the head and the chest, the shoulders down toward the mat as you draw the hands forward, forward, forward. And simply surrender into this. Once again, use your breath. We'll be here for maybe seven to 10 breaths, so not too long. If you're already feeling your child's pose in the hips here, just remain in the stillness and breathe into it. However, if you want a little bit more out of this, I invite you to walk the knees wide. The wide-legged child's pose. Of course, the big toes stay together, but the heels can come even wider than your mat. And then come back down into it. You'll feel this variation in the inner groin thighs. But feed your breath into the shape. I will sound like a broken record telling you to breathe over and over again. But using the power of your breath is pretty miraculous how far you can bring your body in just a half a minute or so. Continue to softly breathe in and out of the nose for one last deep round here. And then your next inhale, bring yourself up into what's called tabletop position. So take a moment to establish what I call a stable table. Fan the fingers into the earth, blow the shoulders, gently press the tops of the feet into the ground. And breathe through a few rounds of cat-cow, drop the belly, inhale, draw the chest forward any amount. Exhale, you're going to drop the head between your arms and round the back. Cat pose. Go back and forth a few more times to your own breath. Close the eyes and make this as intuitive as possible. You might need to move a little faster than me or a, little, a lot slower than me. And that's totally okay. This is not a Simon Says activity. This is all about you learning to listen to what your body needs. One last round. Good. Now you're going to bring your right foot forward to your right thumb and roll your way up for a low lunge. Your head should be stacked on top of your shoulders, on top of hips, on top of your back knee. Bring your hands to the hips, hip points squared forward, shoulders squared forward. Now feel subtle engaging of the low belly to draw the frontal hip bones forward and up. And you should begin to feel some sensation in the front of your left thigh. You don't need to really go too deep to begin to feel it. Oftentimes in low lunge, people will stoop their hips farther forward because they think the, the farther their hips are forward, the more the deep of a pose it is. But it's often not the case. You can get a whole lot in this upright position. So one last deep breath here. 
And on your next exhale, you're gonna heel toe your right foot forward. And extend that leg long as you bring the fingertips to tent out on either side of your right leg. Now here's where if you have yoga, bro yoga blocks of some kind, they may be helpful for you. So if you have them and bring your hands to the floor, it's maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to use them. Begin to breathe into this pose. It's called Arta Hanuman, which translates from Sanskrit into half monkey, which kind of makes sense. I guess us as humans, we're all kind of half apes, if you think about it. So if you're feeling this, stay here and breathe. However, if you're wanting a little bit more out of this pose, try these options. Option one, bring your right thumb to your right hip. Actually draw your right hip back. Option two, as you maintain option one, is to think about lengthening your spine a little bit more. In other words, if you're rounding down like forehead to knee, lift and lengthen. And as you lengthen forward, think chin to shin. Third, third and final cue to think about is to, instead of just letting your right foot kind of be lazily resting, is to actively draw your right toes back toward your right shin. And breathe into that for one last deep breath. Good. And re-bend into the right knee. Gently slide that right foot back toward your child's pose, or I mean, rather your tabletop position. And from tabletop between sides, we're just gonna take a few cat cows. So inhale, drop the belly to cow pose, draw the chest forward. Exhale, round the spine, cat pose, drop the head. Just take a few more rounds of that, and notice if you feel a difference between your left and right sides. Good, feel free to take as many rounds of cat-cow as serves you. And when you're ready, slide your left leg forward to your left thumb and roll your way up to low lunge. Take a moment to establish the alignment. Once again, good spinal alignment, feeling the knee, hip, shoulders, and crown of the head in one long, strong line. Frontal hip bones forward and up until you feel the sensation in the front of the right thigh. Just breathe into it. Now, although I do cue you to activate my working every point of contact with the, the ground down into the ground, I want you to think about this whole practice like equal ease and equal effort. So there's a sense of holding yourself upright here, but at the same time, you're going deeper by allowing by inviting a sense of gentleness in. It's certainly not the same mentality as like weightlifting or CrossFit or even doing a stronger yoga class. So one last breath. And we shift toward Anna Arda Hanuman on the left side, heel toe your left foot forward. Once again, think long spine, shin to shin. If you liked this option on the first side where you bring your thumb to your left hip crease, actually draw the left hip back and flex into your left foot. And just give your leg permission to melt open. The thumbnail of this video says yoga for tight asses. And that's a bit tongue in cheek because I, I don't like to take life too seriously. I think that's actually one of the, the greatest virtues of the yoga practice is lightheartedness and levity. So I try to embarrass myself at least once every yoga class. But so too, a lot of us are going through life in this world as tight asses, holding on to more tension, trying to be the general manager of the universe. And this is an opportunity where you can deliberately give yourself permission to surrender control. I'm not telling you not to be that controlling person. You can wake up tomorrow and do that. But tomorrow night, give yourself the permission to come back to this and, and let go. It's a really important practice. One last breath. Rebend into the left knee, slide your left leg back. Tabletop. If you want to take a few cat cows just to notice where your body is at, hopefully the legs will feel quite a bit more balanced after doing both sides. When you're ready, 
You're going to come into a cross-legged seated position. Sukhasana, easy seat. Sit on your sits bones evenly, allowing the crown of your head to extend up to the sky. We'll do a little bit of rotation in the spine, a little bit of folding forward. And also, you'll definitely begin to feel this in, in the hips. So as you can see for me, I actually haven't done my yoga practice today, so my knees are higher than I would like them to be. So this next option is going to allow you to work the knees to relax down to the ground a little bit more. So sit up really tall, bring your left fingertips to tent out to the left side of you, and bring your right hand to your right thigh. And as you bring your hand to your right thigh, turn the chest over to the left. And use your hand to ease the right hip crease open. On your inhale, think about lengthening your spine as you draw your chest open to the left away from your right knee. And on your exhale, once again, invite a little bit of that gentleness back in. One last deep breath. Good, inhale through center. One or two breaths just as a counter rotation to the other side. We'll spend a lot more time on this side when we find the opposite cross of the legs in just a minute. But then come back to center. Sit really tall, roll forward on the front of the pelvis almost as if you're sitting on the tops of the backs of your thighs rather than on the butt itself. Lead to the chest, walk your fingertips forward and then fold down. If it feels okay, you can drop the head or you can keep it a little bit more upright, whatever works for you. Bring that breath back into it. It's such an important part of the yoga practice. Of the eight limbs of yoga, one of the limbs is the physical postures and a whole other limb is the breathing of the breath, pranayama. Yoga of the breath. So just one more round, deep inhale. Exhale. Gently on an inhale, roll your way back up to seated. Switch the cross of your legs to the opposite cross. Take a moment to realign. This might feel a little bit awkward because it's your unhabitual cross. But same thing, opposite side. Sit really tall, left hand to left thigh. Tent your fingertips out back behind you to the right. I have this wall behind me. Ideally, I'd be reaching a little bit farther back behind me. But hopefully, you get the idea. And as you twist your chest to the right, you can gently push your left hand into the left thigh. You get a little bit of rotation of the spine in addition to this nice opening in the left hip. When we sit down a lot all day and walk around a lot all day, or we're in our cars driving a lot each day, the front of the hips are always in this flexed position. And so our hips become like a piece of paper that has been folded in one direction so many times. If you lay it out on a table, it naturally would just stay folded. But in order to balance it out, we have to kind of unfold it the opposite way. One last breath. Come through center on your exhale. We'll take a little bit of a counter pose to the opposite side. Breathe here for two or three breaths. Good, come through center. And we fold forward over our crossed legs. Just make sure your spine is long and aligned and come forward. Personally, I'm going to keep my spine rather elongated with the chest upright and the head upright as well. My reason for that is because this alignment tends to keep the stretch, the opening, in the hips. However, you have the option to experiment. If you want to drop the head around the back, see how that feels for you. It's not necessarily a bad variation, it's just different. And I'm willing to bet if you take that variation, you'll begin to feel some opening up the back rather than the hips. 
So no, that is different. If you're looking for some hip openers today, staying a little bit more upright might serve you better for that intention. Either way, wherever you're at, just three more. Deep grounding breaths. Really inviting the ease into your mind and your body. How little can you try? Deep relaxation. your inhale, slowly roll up and we'll end with a little bit of a mindful conclusion to our class here. So if you want to lay down flat on your back in Shavasana, I invite you to do so. Or you can do like me and just sit in a cross-legged meditation posture. And just create the space for yourself for acknowledging the work you've done and letting it all settle. How do you feel physically, mentally, maybe even emotionally different from just 10 or 15 minutes ago? And send gratitude to yourself for even showing up. And my favorite teachers always like to say that 90% in life is simply showing up. And my friends, if you have watched the end of this video, you have done just that. So bring the hands together at the heart center. Namaste, my friends. May you make your lives a masterpiece. Thank you so much for joining me. Many videos on this channel, meditation and yoga, and many more to come very soon. So hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and leave me a comment if you have any questions. I hope you, you and me can uh, get together and practice some yoga again very soon. All right, my friends, have a great day. Until next time. May you make your life a masterpiece. Breathe in deep, see peace. Body and mind, so divine, claim your power, now's your time.